baseball, there's a terribly mean, derisive term for players who still haven't made it into the majors, but they're around 25, 26 years old, and they're clearly too good for AAA. They're called 4A. Man, I'm wondering about this Jansen Harkins. I really am. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates, the other two teams in town that I cover. Last night, I was at PPG Paints Arena covering Red Wings 2, Penguins 1. Alex Andelkovich was the best player on either team, I thought. 22 saves on 24 shots. Xavier Ouellette scored the goal. Kind of a broken play. Doesn't really mean anything. A lot like Ouellette himself, depth defenseman in the organization. But I couldn't take my eyes off Harkins. For anyone who doesn't even have that name ringing a bell for them, He's a 26-year-old left winger who was let go or put on waivers by the Jets earlier this week. The Penguins claimed him from Winnipeg and brought him into practice a couple days ago, threw him right out there in the game last night, and you could see immediately why this guy has the AHL pedigree that he has. He's 6'2", 197. He can really move. He's got this nastiness about him. And he also, I'm going to find these numbers here to make sure that I don't misstate these because they're a little bit hard to believe. He had 50 points in 44 games for the Manitoba Moose of the AHL. That's the Jets affiliate. They play in the same building. 50 points in 44 games. When he was playing for the NHL Jets, he had three goals, two assists in 22 games. And there's a a bit of an asterisk that gets attached to that because the time that he spent with the parent Jets, he was being used as a fourth liner. He was out there killing time. He was playing six, seven minutes a game. Now, could he have played his way up the depth chart? Sure, yeah, but I'm just trying to be real with you here. You're not going to get that many points ever if you have that amount of ice time and you have no power play time or whatever. So you look at him and you wonder what it is. I don't even want to say what it is that's right with him. I want to know what's wrong with him. I want to know what the fatal flaw is. See, these 4A baseball players, in almost every case, there's one pitch that mystifies them. There's one pitch, maybe just to one location in the strike zone, that they can't hit. They can't get a bat on that ball. It becomes the death knell of a career. Because now everybody's got the book. Everybody sees that slider down and in after you've been fed a fastball, you're out. You just have no hope. And with hockey, it's obviously not quite like that. But what would be this guy's problem? I'll say it again. Good frame. Good speed. Good competitive nature. The Red Wings last night, the players that they brought along, Detroit had a a pretty decent lineup. Unlike the Penguins, who were just using a bunch of minor leaguers for whatever reason, they wanted to kill him. They, They were after... Harkins all night long. And I I had to ask afterward, what was that? Uh, just obviously like a little bit of a lot of anticipation going into the game. So just um, kind of use try to use that and the excitement for kind of energy and then just kind of uh, go out there and make some plays. So um, I think it turned out pretty well. Obviously you want to I'd like to kind of feel the puck a bit more, and and um, but you know that comes with time. I think just getting in and you got a lot of energy and kind of trying to harness that a little bit. 
dude had a big old smile, too. You can probably even hear it in his intonation there. And there's some guys that he knew from the from the minors. They, they had to compete a lot between uh, Detroit's AHL affiliate and Grand Rapids and heading on up to Winnipeg being in the same division in the AHL. And he'd made some enemies, but... You know what? You show me a hockey player who's made enemies, especially long-standing enemies who want to kill you, and I'll show you a player who's competing. I'll show you a player who's got something of a streak. And I'm not going to make all that much out of one preseason game for anybody. That's all we've seen of this guy so far, in addition to a fairly impressive practice the day before. And I'll say it again, I'd much rather find out, even at the cost of other potential player moves or whatever else, because he takes up a roster spot, he takes up some salary cap space, whatever, I don't want to be sending him back into any kind of pool. I don't want to be sending him back to Winnipeg, which would have the first claim. Uh, I want to see what's here. I want to find out first what it was that the Jets didn't like about him. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Kate, who says, Rodney Zahorna could actually be claimed through waivers again. He's been noticeably better in this preseason so far seems to have found a way to use his size more effectively he's winning some face-offs going to the net showing better vision i'd like to see him stay up to see how he does for a more extended time in the real games kate i'm respectfully not there and i say that as someone who would rather see zahorna being your fourth line center over jeff carter but that's not the world that we live in. The Carter thing is almost on its own island, but it's a real island. So I've said in no uncertain terms that I'd love to see Zahorna beat him out. I'd also like to see Zahorna. He, uh, he drives me nuts, okay? If you watch the entirety of that game last night against the Red Wings, You'll see moments where Zahorna looks like a man among boys out there, and I'm not just referring to his size. He'll do things in particular with his skating stride that almost, almost, not quite, will remind you of something that Gino would do. Because he'll do it with the same level of authority and confidence, and you'll go, whoa, who's that guy? But then... He'll just throw the puck away. And I, I know that's, that doesn't exactly sound like I'm breaking from the Geno description, but bear with me here. Or he'll do something that's so weak-sticked. That's not even a word, but just go with it. It, it sounds like a hockey thing, right? It, he'll lose the puck so easily because he'll all of a sudden just perform like he's any other guy out there. He'll take a shot that's weak. There's that word again. And without conviction, without authority, without any kind of determination, like, damn it, I'm here to score. And that's, to me, is just, I don't know quite what to make of that because I don't think of him as lazy. He happens to be more diligent defensively than I think most will realize. But I just see so much that's unfulfilled, so much of a performance that's below as where I think his ceiling should be, that I wonder what the heck else is going on under that helmet. And similar to the subject that I brought up in the opening segment, what if he's a 4A player? And what if it's that very characteristic that defines him as a 4A player. We've seen a lot more of him, obviously, than we have of Harkins. But we also see, especially now that he's been in other organizations, he's been in the Calgary system, he's been in the Toronto system, and he's still not 
poking his head through the NHL roof. This isn't going to be one of those where you can say Mike Sullivan hates young players or whatever. No, the Flames didn't want him either. The Maple Leafs didn't want him either. So maybe he's the one who needs to bear down and produce it. And I don't know if that's going to happen here, especially since Carter's still here. I appreciate the question, Kate. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 